A day of wrath is coming, and people can make as much fun as they want now. But when the day of wrath actually comes, no one will be making fun then. In the scriptures, the prophets have long foretold of a day of the Lord. This is gonna be a great and awesome time of wrath. All the wrath that God has stored up will be poured out on planet Earth. Even John the Baptist said, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Well, today's chapter of Revelation 6 gives us a vivid description of the day of wrath. In fact, they say in Revelation 6, verse 17, for the great day of their wrath has come, and who can stand? People are gonna be calling on the mountains and the rocks to fall on them, because there is nowhere to run, there is nowhere to hide. It is just time for the wrath of the Almighty God. Now, wrath is a subject that a lot of people want to stay away from because they think it makes God look like a bad guy. Even Christians can many times act embarrassed that God has so much wrath. But, but let's make this very clear here as we read Revelation 6 today, that God is not the bad guy when it comes to wrath. We are the bad guys who have sin and God's wrath is a righteous and just response to our sin. The Bible is very clear about this, particularly in the book of Romans. In fact, Romans spends chapters describing for us the wrath of God. In Romans 1.18, it says that the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all unrighteousness and ungodliness of men. So God has an anger against our sin because we are sinning against him. And so God will even in response to sin, give people over to more sin. In Romans chapter two, verse five, it makes it very clear that when we sin, we are storing up wrath for ourselves on a day of wrath that is coming on our entire planet. In fact, the book of Ephesians chapter five, verse 6 or Colossians chapter 3 verse 6 they say that it is because of these things things like sexual immorality taking God's gift outside of marriage because of sin like that the wrath of God is surely coming so let's just make it very clear that God is not a bad guy at all because he has wrath we are the ones who have been bad actors and God's wrath in his patience, he hasn't poured out all of his wrath on us yet, but he is storing up all of the wrath for sin, all of the sin that is taking place today all over the planet. There is a righteous response of angry judgment that God is storing up as wrath, and there is coming a day when that wrath will be unleashed on planet Earth. Today we're coming to you from Sunken City here in San Pedro, California. And there used to be some beautiful houses overlooking these cliffs. There used to be a road that went straight through here. And they have sunken down into the sea. And they are now a symbol of destruction, the kind of destruction that is going to come on the day of God's wrath revealed to us in Revelation chapter six. And I wanna go through this chapter with you. I hope you've already read the chapter. I wanna invite you to open your Bible and go through this chapter with me because Jesus is gonna start opening the seals on the scroll, the seven seals. And when he opens them in heaven, there is judgment here on earth. 
And so the first four seals that he opens, they unleash these four horses and their four riders. They're known as the four horsemen of the apocalypse. And I don't like that phrase because we've already learned in our study of Revelation, going back to chapter one, verse one, that the apocalypse is the unveiling, specifically the unveiling of Jesus Christ. And we have had a glorious description of Jesus in the book of Revelation. In the last chapter, we saw him as the lion of the tribe of Judah and as the lamb who was slain. And so Jesus now is the one who is worthy to take the scroll and to open the seals. And that brings out the horse and the rider four different times of different colors. And so the first horse is white. And this represents a false Christ or the spirit of the Antichrist that will go throughout the earth and give people this sense of peace when there really is no peace. The second horse, as he opens the second seal and then one of the four living creatures says, come, and then this horse comes forth with its rider, it's a red horse. And this is the horse of war, where men are now going to slay one another and there's going to be wars and rumors of wars all over the earth. The third horse is a black horse. And the rider has a pair of scales in his hand because now food apparently becomes extremely expensive because there is a famine all over the earth. And then the, the fourth horse is just tragic. It's a pale horse. Its rider, his name is death. And one fourth of the earth will die when this seal is opened. Just think about four people and one out of every four people all over planet Earth, almost eight billion people now, one out of four of them dying. That's what happens with these first four seals being opened up. The four horses and their riders come about. Now, I really want to encourage you to pause what you're doing right now and go look up Matthew chapter 24, verses five to seven. That's a cross reference. I highly recommend you gotta go look up this cross reference because it's a part of Jesus's Olivet Discourse. So this is a teaching that Jesus gave about the future during Passion Week, or as we're calling it, Gospel Week 2023. So it's so appropriate that you would go and read a little Matthew 24, because Jesus is on the Mount of Olives overlooking Jerusalem, and he's teaching them about the end times judgment. So it's a great parallel. And if you read Matthew 24, verse five, you will see that a false Christ is gonna spread over the earth. You're gonna hear about the wars and rumors of wars. It mentions a famine in verse seven. So I think it's pretty clear that what Jesus is talking about, the beginning of birth pangs that Jesus talks about in Matthew 24 is a parallel passage to what's happening with these four horsemen and, and, and here in Revelation 6. So make sure you check out what Jesus says in Matthew 24 today. Now, back in Revelation 6, the fifth seal introduces us to the martyrs. So these are the souls of those who are under the altar and they have been slain for the word of God and for their testimony of Jesus. And these martyrs, this is very interesting. This now takes us from the judgment here on earth and gets us back into the heavenly throne room where these martyrs are crying out, how long before you will judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? So the, the blood of these martyrs has been shed and the promise of scripture is when you shed blood, well then your blood is going to be shed. And so the martyrs are crying out for God to bring justice because the way they were killed was not right. And so this is very interesting to see the cry of God's people in heaven that there would be justice here on earth. And we're gonna to get to these martyrs again in Revelation chapter eight. So the souls of the martyrs under the altar, we will get back to that, Lord willing, in Revelation eight. But the sixth seal is really what we wanna focus on here in Revelation chapter six. And this seal, once Jesus 
opens up the sixth seal. It's like the way the world that we live on works changes. Something fundamentally changes in, in, in our planet, in the universe. It talks about a great earthquake. The sun becomes black. The moon becomes like blood. And it's like stars start falling to the earth. Like you can go read some interesting articles about asteroids and meteors striking the earth because it's literally like the sky is falling and there's nothing protecting us from the wrath of God coming down on us and the mountains are hiding and the islands are being removed from their place and people are running around. Whether you're one of the powerful kings, one of the rich people, or whether you're just a common person, free or slave, everybody's running and looking for a place to hide because it's like the wrath of God is coming down to crush us. It's coming down upon us and I'd rather have that rock fall on me than experience the wrath of God. So this is 100% meant to scare you when you read Revelation 6. It's meant to scare you and me and everybody who reads this. And when somebody has a tough guy bravado, I'm not scared of the wrath to come. Really all you're saying is you're not taking this scripture seriously. Because this is meant to terrify us. This is, this is a scene out of a horror movie where everybody is fleeing for their lives. The kind of scene that you would never want yourself or anyone you love to ever be in. That's what Revelation 6 is giving us. You don't want to be around on the day of wrath that is coming. So let me speak to everybody who believes in Jesus right now. Because if you do a study on God's wrath, and the Greek word is orge, and if you track it through the different uh, books of the New Testament scriptures that are written in Greek, there I found some encouragement in 1 Thessalonians. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 10, it promises all of us who are waiting for Jesus to come from heaven to get us, Jesus will rescue us from the wrath that is to come. So just on my study of the scripture, I don't believe that God intends for all of us who believe in Jesus to experience his wrath. Jesus already took the wrath of God for us on the cross, so we never have to experience the wrath of God. Can I get an amen from anybody on that, right? Another reference, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 9 says, God has not destined us for wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. So 1 Thessalonians 5 is talking about the day of the Lord, this great day of wrath and judgment, but it's saying it's not for us who believe. Whew, I'm so glad I won't experience what Revelation 6 is talking about. But what about those we know and love who would experience a day of God's wrath? See, this is why I'm so glad we're reading this chapter on Gospel Week because I don't want people to go through this. And this makes me think, we gotta warn people before it's too late. We gotta let them know. The wrath of God coming is a motivation for me to have a sense of urgency because people are gonna experience an emergency. And so I wanna let them know the good news of Jesus now before it's too late. So I wanna encourage you to really consider who do you know right now in your life that if the wrath of God, if the day of God's wrath happened now, if it happened soon, they would not be ready. They would not be rescued by Jesus because they have yet to believe in Jesus. Man, I'm wondering, can you pray for them? Can you spend some time going to God and asking him to save that person before it's too late so they will never experience this day of wrath? Can you have a wrath lunch or a wrath coffee or a wrath conversation with them where you let them know that you really do believe a day of wrath is coming and you love them so much and you care for them and you don't ever want them to experience that. Can you let them see your passion and your pleading and your urgency that you really believe that God is going to bring wrath on the planet and you want them to be spared from that. You want them to flee from that and if they repent of their sins then God will relent of his judgment. You know, Joel chapter 2, 
verse 11 to 13 is another great cross-reference that really parallels the end of Revelation chapter 6. And it talks about the great and awesome day of the Lord. Who's going to be able to endure it? Who can stand in the day of God's wrath? But then it says, God speaking, he says, return to me. Return to me, yet even now. The wrath isn't here yet. So yet even now, today, there is a chance for people to repent, to say, I'm the bad actor, I'm the bad guy, and I'm gonna turn from my sin so God can relent of his judgment. And when you turn from your sin to God, because of Jesus Christ already taking God's wrath on the cross for us, then God, he is faithful and just to forgive you for your sins and to cleanse you from all your unrighteousness so that God will no longer judge you. There is no condemnation for those who put their faith in Jesus Christ. That's why we need to repent of our sin and believe in the gospel of Jesus so that we can be saved because a day of wrath is coming. And so who do you know that right now they would be under the wrath of the Almighty? And how can you let them know that they need to turn from their sin so that God will turn from his judgment upon them? I hope this really motivates you because it is Passion Week and Jesus did take the wrath of God for us and we gotta let people know. And I hope to see you for more right here on Scripture of the day.